Hello everyone and welcome to episode 4 of Thank God It's Flow. In this episode, we will learn about scope in flows. Um, you must have seen the scope um, when you select CDAs. So for example, when a record is created and you've selected your data source as CDAs or your connection as CDAs, you will see that under scope, it shows you business unit user, organization, and things like that. And if you haven't encountered it, uh, we will learn about it today. Coming up right after the intro. All right, let's start it. So uh, what we're going to understand is scope in flows, and this is in context to common data services or CDS. And you might have seen it already when you select CDS as a data source or a connection, you see scope in it. Uh, we will see where it is coming from, what's the history behind it. Um, so what I'm on my screen, what you can see is I'm going to create a flow and I'll select CDS when a record is created and click on create. Now, this is the scope I'm talking about. First of all, I'll select an environment here, um, which is this one. I'll select accounts and then you have got these scopes, right? So you've got business unit, organization, parent child business unit, and user. Uh, now this is not in sequence, it's just alphabetical order. So it's not like you have to do it one by one or whatever. Um, then you've got enter custom value. So you can actually enter none as well um, as custom value and it should work. Um, now the irony is this is all coming from Dynamics 365. That's where in native workflows, we used to define scope of a workflow, native workflow of Dynamics 365 as one of these. That's what we used to do. Now it's coming here in CDS flows, while if you go to a flow where you select Dynamics 365, you don't have scope option there, right? So I'll close that. I was just trying to show it that it's not there. It's only in CDS leave the page now if i click on this information button here you can see it triggers a flow when an object is created in dynamics 365 you can click on learn more and go to docs.microsoft.com and read more about it but scope is a required field here if somebody is new to flows uh, they'll not understand what we are talking about because they have not seen scope if I go to CDS, so this is my CDS, I go to entities, I don't know what, what you're talking about in terms of um, scope. So let's look at the history where it is coming from. As I said, from Dynamics 365 and the native workflows, we used to have something called scope. Now, scope in Dynamics 365, it defines or drives both of these things, security roles and business units, right? So you have business units and then you define security roles. So basically, whatever you define in your security role that drives how people can access or what they can access, what, what they cannot access, it's by that. So I'll quickly open, so you can see business units, you can see security roles. I'll quickly open one of the security roles here. Now, this is, don't get confused, there are too many bubbles, I know, but um, what do you see here is scope. So you see the key, user, business unit, parent, child, business unit, and organization, that's there. So what it means if, so you see this action card, this means that the user can create an action card because it's under create column for themselves and not anybody else, right? Similarly read and where you see it completely green, it means organization. So they can read accounts of entire organization. Now you might still not be clear what's organization, what's user and what's business unit. 
So we will talk about that and that's how I'm going to explain it to you. But just now I thought it would be good if I can show you the native workflow screens here. So if I click on new, right, um, I'll just do it here, category workflow, entity account, and I click OK. Once I click OK, I'll have to define the scope of this workflow. Looks a bit slow for some reason, but I just wanted to compare it. So it's basically what's in flow or Power Automate right now. It's basically coming from here. And I think it's because of the demand of people. They wanted flows to run like the native workflows. Um, so you can see scope here, right? It says user, business unit, parent, child, organization, right? So that's the scope. Now, going back to our flows. I will select as of now, I'll just select organization here so we can remain on this screen. Now, let me try and explain it to you. And there's, uh, so we've already talked about um, four different types of scope. Flow also provides you an option to enter a custom value there, uh, but majorly there are four types, right? Now, we will try and understand it. So I have tried to create uh, an organization um, or org structure here. So DIY D365 Limited is the head office, right? So that's my um, parent business unit or, um, yeah. So that's the head office, that's the base. And then we've got two locations in two different countries. One is Australia and the second one is New Zealand. Within Australia, we have then got offices in Brisbane and Sydney. Within New Zealand, we have got offices in Auckland and Wellington, right? So I tried to explain the structure of the organization here. Now, if it is not clear, I'll move on to next screen. See, so it's the exact same thing, different color. But what you see here, everything in here is called an organization. So what it means is if you select scope as organization within your flow, that flow is going to run for entire organization. What you also see here on the screen is uh, the different users. So users within a business unit, that's why. So all these blue blocks are actually business units. Some are parents, some are child, some are independent, but within them, there are some user settings. So basically let's just assume that Top management sits in the business unit, DIY D365, then Australian management team is under Australia and New Zealand management team is under New Zealand, while salespeople are in Brisbane and Sydney, right? Similarly, Auckland and Wellington, we have got salespeople sitting in these business units. But this completely is an organization. So if you create a flow and set the scope, to organization, it will run for each and every one uh, slash each and every user in this organization, right? So basically it's running for everyone. So that's what scope organization is. Number two, defining parent child business unit. So as the name suggests, parent business unit and child business unit. So there are two business units involved, there are two groups of users involved in here. So the first example I'm trying to show you is Australia and Brisbane. So where parent is Australia and child is Brisbane. So if I sit, if let's say I'm Prashant and I'm part of Australia business unit and I go and create a flow that will, and I've got parent child business unit uh, security roles, which was that bubble screen I was trying to show you. And I create a flow, that flow will run for the top management in Australia business unit, as well as the salespeople in Brisbane business unit. So that that's your parent child. So it runs for the parent as well as the child below it. Remember this, that a parent child will always start from level two, where level two, I'm saying Australia and New Zealand, level one is DIY D365. Now, 
why not DIY D365? Because if you do a parent child at DIY D365 level, it basically means organization anyway, because you're covering everything below it. So that becomes organization. So that's why it's always better to have parent child business unit. Um, security roles or privileges below level one, right? And what it's trying to do here or here is Although this, this is also marked as parent child business unit, but then but that's what I said. My recommendation is you don't do it here because then it becomes child and child and child. So it becomes organization anyway. Okay. So that's your parent child, um, business unit, right? So the next one. Okay. So the next one is business unit, which means that if I'm sitting in Australia business unit and I go and create a flow and set the scope to business unit. That flow will only run for my business unit, not like any other business unit because I'm part of Australia business unit. That flow will run for everybody who is a user in Australia business unit. So it will run for that specific business unit. If you set the scope to business unit, right? So this was quite easy to understand. And then we have the last one, which is users. So if a user, wherever a user is sitting in this organization and they go and create a flow and they set the scope to user, that means it will only run for them. So nobody else, but just for them, specifically for them. So that's what our user scope is. It's quite easy to understand. I thought it would have been better if you guys were asking questions to me about it. Um, but you can always comment um, on my video and I might try and answer your question. But this is pretty simple to understand. If you can relate it to Dynamics 365 security model and native workflow scope, if you try and do that, it's pretty simple to understand. If you're new to flows, uh, that's why I made this video so that you can also understand and see where it is coming from and how it helps. So now, coming to how it helps is that you can limit the scope of the flow. The, if, if there was no scope, the flow is running for entire organization anyway, right? So which means more um, flows are running. So more uh, consumption of wherever it's stored. We used to call it process sessions. Um, but since we've got scope, so it's like a filter acting only for specific group of people or a specific number of users, as in when you specify organization, that means it's running for everyone. So there's no limitation. But if you say just for a user, that means only one, only for one person that flow will run. If you say business unit, only for that specific business unit, it would run. Now, this also gives you an opportunity to create different flows for different business units because they might have um, different processes. So for example, Brisbane business unit might want to send out emails to their customers uh, or prospects after a lead is generated, while um, Sydney business unit might want to send out a text to their prospect after a lead is generated. So you can have two different flows and set the scope to business unit like that, right? So that's that. Um, okay, let me just go back to the flow screen. So if you want to learn more, let's quickly click on it and learn more about it. It clearly says common data service uh, is available in the following products and regions. Um, there was a line here um, which says this works for Dynamics 365. Anyway, there's a heap, uh, a lot of information here. You can read about it. If you have any further questions, you can let me know about it in the comment section and make sure you turn the black thumb blue. Um, that gives me some visibility. So thank you so much for watching the video. Have a great day, guys. Thank you.